Hi, this is Rick from 4 Community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. A while ago, I stopped drinking coffee because it was making my head spin. I discovered, did some research, that the kind of caffeine that's in coffee is different than the kind of caffeine that's in tea, and it affected me differently. At least that's what I told myself. I also discovered that drinking a pot or more a day might also be a little too much for me. So I went cold turkey, and I completely cut myself off of all coffee until, you know, I couldn't because caffeine. So from coffee, I went to tea. And I drank tea for a while, and it was kind of okay. I didn't like it as much as coffee, but it was okay. Until it started giving me a similar effect. And I was getting the head spins again. And then I realized that I wasn't drinking water anymore, and I was just drinking a couple liters of tea every single day. And my head started spinning again, and so I went cold turkey. I stopped drinking tea until I couldn't because caffeine. And so from, from tea, I went to, to Diet Coke because, you know, it's cold and it's bubbly and it's cool. Until one day, I started noticing all of the empty bottles that I was collecting in the recycling bins. So I went cold turkey again. No more Diet Coke. Until I couldn't because caffeine. So I went from Diet Coke back to coffee. And I just bought a small coffee maker and I'm perking my own coffee again so I don't spend any money at Tim Hortons. Well, man, I have this love hurt loop with caffeine. I can't live it with it and I can't live without it. I mean, some people, they may call that an addiction and I think they may be right. But for the sake of this video, we're going to call it a love hurt loop because it's gonna help me talk about the topic of this video. But before we get into it, let me ask you, do you have some kind of love hurt loop also? Do you try to stop doing something just to replace it with something else? If you've got some kind of story similar to mine, would you please pause the video and share your experience with the person that you're watching with? This video is based on my interpretation of 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. Just one verse. In this text, we see such simplicity that it can make us so incredibly thankful about how uncomplicated life can be. And we can also see such simplicity that it complicates absolutely every relationship that we have. First John chapter 3, verse 11. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Hey kids, don't forget to watch this week's episode of Connect HQ. See ya! Here's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Escape the love hurt loop. As I interpret this, I'm hearing two things here. First of all, I'm hearing the simplicity of this message, which also implies the simplicity of simply just living a really great life. I'm also hearing the complication of how to live this out. The commitment just to love everyone makes all of our choices really, really simple. And also, the commitment just to love everyone sure does complicate everything. So here's two points I'm going to make around escaping the love hurt loop. First, let's talk about the simplicity of love. Now, I am so very thankful that God defined the lifestyle, the heart, the moral compass, and also the end grading rubric for judgment with just the word love. I'm very thankful that Jesus summarizes the entire set of requirements of God as one, love God, and two, love others as yourself. And we read that in the Gospels. Just speaking personally, I get really lost in a lot of details. I love having a high vantage point to see the big picture and watch how all the parts interact. But if I'm just set in the middle of a lot of details and I can't see the big picture, I'm not in my element. I get stressed out because I have no idea if I'm going in the right direction. Jesus makes it really manageable for a guy like me with my personality type, as this text makes things very manageable. As Jesus says, gives us just two details, 
love God, love others, which is basically what this text is telling us. Those two details are attached to one overarching vision for all of humanity, to exist in loving relationships with God and with others. And that's perfect. Why mess with that? Maybe you can appreciate how easy this makes most of the choices that we have to make. Say you're in a mall, and there's a scenario that plays out before you that calls you to make a choice. What do you do? Well, the details truly don't really matter because you already have the answer. In that scenario, whatever that scenario is, whatever the details are, do something that demonstrates that you love God and that you love other people. That's easy. Somebody cuts you off on the highway while you're driving. Do you flip them the bird? Do you go crazy? Do you get angry? Do you chase them down? Well, no. In that scenario, do something that demonstrates your love for God and your love for others. Your anniversary is coming up and your wife tells you not to buy her a present. Do you follow her wishes? Do you buy her one? In that scenario, do something that demonstrates your love for God and others. If you don't buy her a present, you're demonstrating your love for God in that you want to see him really soon. God has made this really easy on us. In all scenarios, we know what we have to do. The grading rubric has been clearly laid out for us. It's all about love. Love God, love others. Really simple. However, it's really not that simple, is it? Let's talk about the second point here, the complexity of love. As simple as all that I just said really is, it's really complicated. Like, how about these examples? Someone has abused you or has acted towards you in ways that are hurtful. How do you love that person? In the name of love, do you allow that person to stay in close proximity to you? Or is love more complicated than that? And in the name of love, do you actually put up safe boundaries around you, which may be perceived as unloving, but in actuality, it could be very loving of you to do that. I'm a therapist as well as a pastor, and I really want to share one thing about the complexity of love that may actually help us out and cut through some of the complexities of love. I'd like to share about a loop, a love hurt loop, that two people who really love each other, or at least deeply care about each other, some kind of family love, some kind of romantic love, sisterly love, romance, really close office friendship kind of love, all of that, I'd like to share one scenario about how loving can really be complex and how it may not look like love at all, but it is, and also how to get out of this love hurt loop. On the screen in front of you is a picture called the vulnerability cycle, which really represents this love hurt relationship, which really also represents the complexity of how it is we, we love one another and how sometimes that love can be misperceived as actually hurting somebody. One of the toughest things that a person can do is actually share their vulnerability with another human being. On the left side, you'll see that there's this guy named Dave. This is some kind of couple. On the right side, you'll see that there's this, this, you know, this lady named Sheila. I don't know who these people are. They're just totally made up names. On the left side, in this loving relationship that these two people are in, Dave is feeling kind of inadequate. Dave is feeling kind of abandoned in this relationship. Things are not going really, really well. Sheila really loves Dave, and Sheila is attempting to love Dave with, with the very best that she can do, but Dave is not perceiving it that way. He's, he, he's perceiving that he's, he's inadequate, and he's been abandoned by her. So what happens is Sheila's activity hits Dave in his vulnerable spot, and he gets hurt. And because Dave gets hurt and he still loves her and wants to stay in the relationship, what he does is he goes to his survival strategy. And his survival strategy to stay in this loving relationship is to act defensively and is to withdraw. And then he sends that over to Sheila and that hits her in her most vulnerable spot. And suddenly she's feeling unprotected and suddenly she's feeling overburdened. She didn't know what to do about it, but she knows she loves Dave and she wants to stay in the relationship. So what does she do? She goes to her survival strategy and she begins to act critical and angry and over-responsible. 
and she sends that over to Dave, and it hits Dave right in the feels. It hits him right in the vulnerable spot. And this, my friends, is the love-hurt relationship. This is how complicated love can be sometimes. It's, it's not as easy as just saying, just love everybody, because you know what? Love requires a lot of vulnerability. And when you and I expose ourselves and we're vulnerable to others, what happens is we get hit in the soft spot. We get hit in the vulnerable spot sometimes. And when we get hit in the vulnerable spot, it tends to create a reaction which, which is informed by our survival strategy and the behavior and the thoughts and the feelings that we send back over to that other person is defensive, is withdrawn, is critical, angry. Love, love is complicated. It's really easy to say that we need to love one another. It is really easy to say we need to love God first, we need to love others second. But what do we do when we feel hurt? What do we do when we feel, oh, God has hurt us, the church has hurt us. You know, I feel that uh, God has abandoned me. I feel so inadequate because God and the church has hurt me. How do we respond to God? We usually get into our survival strategy. We act defensive. We act withdrawn. I'm not going back to church. I'm not going to reach out to God anymore. What is that? Is that a lack of love? Eh, it's a survival strategy. You know, what happens when, when we get hit in the feels by another person? And we go to our survival strategy. Let's go back to the verse. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 says, This is the message you've heard from the beginning. We should love one another. I love the simplicity of this. This is awesome. I also see the complexity of it because love is hard. You know, what part of love is hard? The vulnerability part of love. The self-sacrifice part of love, that's just a cost. That's just a price. The vulnerability part of love, oh, that's hard. It's very risky. We're not all that great at love sometimes. We get lost in it. We get hurt in it. Two well-intentioned and loving people can still get hurt very deeply by each other. So here's my suggestion as we're trying to discern how to put this verse into action. How do we actually just keep it simple and love one another? What does love truly look like? And when we've lost our way, how can we get it back? When we find ourselves in this love hurt loop, how do we get out of it? And how do we start actually showing each other true love again that we perceive as love? First John is gonna help us a little bit more with this further down in a couple of verses, but for now, I'm going to share with you what I'm thinking. And please let me know what you think of my thought. And if you think something differently, I'm going to love to hear what you're thinking about. Here's my thought. Choose vulnerability. One of the greatest risks we can take as people is simply to be vulnerable with the people around us. It's the greatest risk that we can take for some of us. I mean, children and teens, they do a way better job of this. The older we get, the harder this gets. Choose vulnerability. If you're in that love-hurt relationship, and if it's safe, someone isn't actually beating you up or abusing you or taking advantage of you, try vulnerability. Let's talk about this further, okay? Because obviously this is way more complicated than what I just shared. And Every single relationship needs to be treated differently. So I would love to talk this out with you. You know, don't just take this at face value. Let's talk this out. So that's it from me to you for now. Would you please like? Would you please share? Would you please subscribe? Would you please also ask for the link? Because I'd love to have a conversation with you about this. Uh, you can catch us online two times this Sunday, 10.30 and 6 p.m. And also you can catch us at Beaton, Beaton Community Center at uh, 3 o'clock this week for community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. See you next time.